is uh, what which that which we'll be looking at in detail in terms of, uh, of, of the message. So um, from the Bibles that we have in our hands, let us turn to Psalms, Psalms chapter 90. Let us turn to Psalms chapter 90. Uh, it's himself not a very long uh, song, because it is a song. Um, therefore, I'm going to ask us to go through it. Nikki has uh, New King James, right? Yeah, I think there are a few uh, verses that I believe are going to be richly brought out to us in, um, in um, New King James version. But um, allow me to go very fast. I have got NIV, but then Nikki will uh, maybe uh, help us with uh, looking at some particular text. So uh, from um, from chapter verse one, it says like, "Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, uh, you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn people back to that thing. Return to that. You mortal, you mortal." A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning, it springs up new, but by evening, it's dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquity before you, our script in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with the moon. Our days may come to 70 years or 80. If our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relevant, relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. Uh, for as many days as you may have afflicted us. For as many years as we have been uh, we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to your children. May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Now, when we look at that uh, particular chapter, it has a very important message to us that uh, tells us of the role that God is playing in each and every of our lives because he is our creator. And uh, it is, uh, it is his prerogative to determine the kind of life that uh, we are going to be living, be it a easy life or a complex life. Uh, but then I'm not going to be able to look at the entire chapter. I'm going to, be going to be focusing on that um, particular verses, actually, and my key text comes between verses 9 and 12, and that is where uh, our message uh, is going to be um, coming from this, this, this morning. So even as we go into that, I'm asking that the Lord uh, be our guide and uh, prepare in our hearts uh, a place so that we get a message and find something so that by the time we be walking out of that door later in the day, we shall have felt that we have experienced uh, had an experience with God. Therefore, let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the gift of life that you have called each and every one of us. We do not take this for granted. So I want to thank you because you've taken care of us for the last Sabbath and uh, throughout the last couple of days from the last Sabbath to you know, when uh, physically our members met in church and of course in the middle of the week when there was a brief meeting uh, which not all of us may have um, attended. But even in our absence, uh, we still see your grace because we see your faithfulness 
uh, in the lives of those who attended the meetings and we thank you for their friends and uh, uh, family who have joined us this morning. Uh, it's my prayer that even as uh, we start this service, you uh, use me mightily for the message that you want to share with your, uh, with your sons and daughters. Let me not be the one who's speaking, but let the Holy Spirit uh, take care of this meeting and guide us through for this, my prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. So, Nikki, please, could you read for us verses 9 to 12 in uh, New King James Version, and then uh, we could uh, continue from there. This is 92. 90. 90. Uh, yes. So, uh, verse 7 says, mm-hmm. when we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our refugees before our sacred food in the light of your country. Verse 9 says, For all our days have passed away in Iraq. We finished our youth like a star. Go a little close, please. The days of our life are 70 years, and if by reason of the change, they are 80 years. Yet, their wound is only labor and form. Mm-hmm. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Mm-hmm. Who knows the power of your anger? For at the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to remember our pain, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Okay, thank you. So when we look at those uh, texts that Nikki has uh, read for us, I'm going to ask that we lose, let us lose no focus of that. But we learn from the, um, that particular text that because of the fragility or the frailty of our, our lives, we need God in our, uh, pre- in our presence, so we need God to be in our presence, so that he helps us to understand how best to use and plan our time. Uh, the book, uh, the book of uh, Psalms, is uh, divided into about uh, five sections, which are called uh, books. Um, verse or chapter 90, the one which we are focusing on uh, this morning, has been written uh, by by Moses. But apart from that, uh, the section, this is section four, has about uh, 17 chapters, and out of these 17 chapters, um, the uh, there is a total of, um, no, out of the 17 chapters, uh, from 90 to 106 uh, of uh, these chapters, these make uh, the, the, what, the, the fourth, the fourth, um, uh, the fourth, uh, the fourth book. But you also learn, if you look at this particular book, that there are 14 songs or 14 chapters which have been written by individuals who are unknown. These are uh, unknown authors. Uh, chapter 101 and chapter 103 have been written by King David, who is the servant of the Lord. But then chapter 90, which we are focusing on this morning, has been written by Moses. And in that chapter, there's a portion where Moses is speaking. And his speech is like a prayer to the Lord, which he asks for a number of things so that the God, that, that the Lord may be able to what? May be able to 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 answer him. He says like um in verse 12, he says that teach us to number our days that you may gain a heart of wisdom. Right? Teach us to number our days so that we may be able to what? To gain a heart of wisdom. So chapter twenty, chapter ninety verse twelve is the message that I want us to, 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 to watch, to, to, to focus on. But I'm gonna uh, uh, speak of uh, it in the light of two other texts. This is uh, First Peter chapter one, uh, verse 25, verse 24 and 25, and then Isaiah 40, 60, 46 to eight. So uh, let us not close some, but I want us to look at two other text, which we are going to use to explain the message that has been captured in Psalm 90, um, verse 12. So, um, 1 Peter 
chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. Nikki, do you have it? Uh -huh. uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And for the glory of man in the flower of the grass, mm -hmm. the grass wind, mm -hmm. and the it is flowers fall away, mm -hmm. and the word of the Lord endures forever. Mm -hmm. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Thank you. Um, have you got uh, forty Isaiah verses six to eight? Is that four, four, zero? Four, zero, uh, six to eight. Yes. It says, the voice says, cry out. Mm -hmm. And then he says, what shall I cry? Mm -hmm. All the flesh is grass, mm -hmm. and all his loveliness is the flower of the field. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then first? Eight, uh, six, to, uh, six, to, six to eight. The grass withers and the, and the flower fades mm -hmm. because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely, people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the water of our grass stands forever. Okay, thank you very much. So, the message that you've got from those two particular texts, so those two particular um, readings, uh, confirm to us the fragility of the life that we are having. There is a contract we, between the, the permanence of our lives as human beings, and no, the, not the permanence, the mortality that we of our lives as human beings and the permanence of God in his being eternal. The reason why I bring this up is that um, there are a number of things that go on in our day, uh, in our day that affect us. And um, just a couple of days, uh, I was talking to a few friends of mine who have uh, been affected uh, by the loss of loved ones. And um, this, to them, was a big blow. Uh, they were saying in my native language, it's like um, a funeral is very light when it is at the neighbor's house. It's like uh, you just hear like Henry's dead and life goes on. But when it's in your own household, where you either lost a loved one, for a very dear person, that is when you get the magnitude of this particular um, ill that may have befallen us. But look at the life that we're living today. Um, the world all over has been hit by, we call it a pandemic, which um, has not uh, subsided fully. It was subsiding and people believe that they were bringing it under control. Uh, with the intentions of getting things like vaccination, which has worked. But even then, we're still seeing a new variant coming in. For those of you who watch news, um, last week, um, let, me, let me say the past couple of weeks, uh, over and above these unfortunate events that have affected the whole world, parts of Europe have been hit by very, very strong winds. There have been serious rains in Germany, there have been serious rains in the United Kingdom. But the ones that hit me hard were in Germany, where I could see lives brought to a halt. People have invested in their houses, you build up your house. And um, there was a particular story which was very sad. There was a valley that um, um, on normal days, uh, when it rains, it would get to about, I don't know, about 30 or 60 centimeters on, on, the, on the higher side. But it rained, and within a couple of minutes, actually they said in 30 minutes, the um, depth of this water had risen to 8 meters. And as it rose to 8 meters, the houses were flooded. There were those houses showing the lower places of the lower parts of this valley. Uh, which could not really withstand the strength. And uh, the rivers that were there uh, broke their banks. And you can imagine, the Amelizos have actually been a, a river on its own. But if it's a valley, there's a portion that water will really find its way to navigate. So this valley was full, was full of this water. And therefore, people's lives 
were brought to a halt. I remember seeing uh, uh, news where people saying that he, someone watched his life being washed away in the period of that started with. So such events are not foreign. They are not unique. Neither will they be um, brought to uh, a standstill or to conclusion. What you are certain of is that each and every day we wake up and we find something new which we may not have been privy to, but we thank God because he has been um, faithful to us and we see him doing in um, the life that we live. And each and every day he says like his grace abounds, even though we as individuals at times may not really uh, do what, what, what is right. Now, there are people who have lost their lives, and that's well giving the story of uh, giving the story of uh, giving the preamble of the story of the, of the pandemic, and then the story of of uh, these uh, floods that have hit uh, that have hit uh, uh, certain parts of of, of, this, of this continent. When we read um, the text that Nikki has, 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 has given us, it tells us like the lives that we have as human beings are like grass. They wither and dry at a given point in time, but there's a time that they also flourish. But the word of the Lord will still remain as it has, it has, it has been. We can just read for me again uh, where you just go back to First Peter and read for us just verse 24. Um, this is the uh, first Peter one twenty four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, uh, one. One. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it says, one mm-hmm. and then the glory of man, the other flower of grass. Mm-hmm. The grass and it is brown forth away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, flowers are, are are what are very very beautiful. I think in this season, when you walk around, there are quite a number of flowers which I appreciate. We appreciate the colors that what that they provide for us. And this is a very clear illustration of what the value for our of our lives may be like, in the sense that people have been able to achieve great things. Uh, people have. Uh, uh, built, people have gone to school, people have done quite a number of things which are very, are very, very um, uh, remarkable and are, 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 are worth noting. But it tells us like all this glory is like grass in the fields which at one particular point in time is blooming and July, but the next, it is no longer there, it has withered away. The question is, whereas the flowers bloom and wither or wait. Does the land in which the, uh, the flowers were planted change? No, it still remains constant. It does not change. It is still the very, very same thing. There is a constant or there's a uniqueness that we see in the land that is remaining constant and the word of God because the word of God does not really change. But what we learn from all of this is that in our lives we may be able to achieve so many things but this will not be indefinite we read in the text that said that if you are lucky your life will just about 70 years but so many people do not achieve those days we suffer illnesses we, we die we die because of so many other uh, so many other complications. But even before we get to that particular death, life is not easy. It is not very very easy. I'm not certain how long my life is, is going to be. What I'm certain about is that it is here, and the time when it has not been easy for me as a person. But even in that. Or through those difficult times, 
the Lord has come through for me, and he has guided me, because as scenarios where I even asked myself, how was I able to, to overcome those challenges? In verse, uh, in chapter 90, where we, we, uh, we read, Moses was asking the Lord for three important things. He was asking the Lord to provide love, joy, and gladness. But then, how do these things come by? I want us to get the context of this uh, and look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29, where there's also another song uh, that has been written by Moses, Deuteronomy uh, 32, 29. And in this particular uh, song, he talks about the, uh, the children of Israel who had, for a very long period of time, broken uh, the covenant um, commitment. And they felt that uh, what they were doing was right. So verse uh, 39, 32, if you're there, 32, 39 says like, um, see now that I myself am he, uh, see now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and bring to life. I have, uh, I have wounded all, I have wounded and I will heal and no, no one can deliver out of my hand. So when we look at that, we, we, we see that the Lord is the one who is able to what? To change our circumstance, uh, be it good or be it bad. But um, whereas we may at times do things with the thought that we, uh, we have the knowledge to, to do the right, we have it all, this has got limits, and therefore it may not really uh, uh, have um, eternity, or it may not really go for a very long period of time. Uh, the book of uh, Job, verse, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, tells us of um, the limitness uh, of the lives of, of we as, as, as human beings. Uh, we could just read it if you have your, your Bible. Job 40, 14, 1 and 2. 14, 1, 4. One and two. Okay. Mortal born of woman at the few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away like a fleeting shadow they do not endure. So this is something that also confirms to us the very, very same text that we read in the earlier, what, in the earlier uh, book that we, that we looked at, right from Sam, um, what has been captured in Peter, and also what has been captured in Isaiah. Um, our life is very, very uh, uncertain, and we ask ourselves, like, how are, are things going to be? It is similar to that, like here in, 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 in Europe, where for now, when you look outside, the weather is very nice. I actually enjoy being in the sun. It's not as cold. But this is only for a couple of months. The rest of the year, we have a very, very different climate that makes us uh, question, not even question, but Make us um, question what we are, we, we are wearing so that we put on something heavy to protect us. So this is something that is very, very similar to the kind of life that we as human beings are, 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 what, are living. But whether or not uh, this season change, there's someone who is supreme and who is above all and who is able to do what? To, to, to guide us into the right way. But the verse 12, of chapter 90 says that let us find wisdom. Wisdom for what? How can wisdom be of value to us? This is something that I'm sure you're going to ask. The wisdom is something that will help you make the right decision and have better lives with others or do something that is worthwhile to glorify the name of the Lord as opposed to you yourself as a person. We've confirmed and read from this very uh, text that our lives are, 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 uh, are very fragile. 
But if we are wise as children of God, then we would do that which will make God glor- uh, God's name be glorified by uh, serving our brothers and sisters and uh, um, providing for the needs of those who are afflicted with various calamities, they may be sick people, they may be just someone who just wants to listen, uh, wants someone to be, to listen to them, or uh, it's really someone who's hungry. Or um, have you ever asked yourself the job that you're doing? Do you think that the job you're doing is something that just came out of, out of, uh, of the blue? It is a service which God has given you. But do you look at it from the perspective that by you doing your job rightly, I'm serving God, or is it just a question of me working, earning, a, uh, earning, a, uh, earning some money, and uh, supporting myself? Have you ever thought about, about it along those lines? These are very, very uh, difficult or challenging questions that come into our lives as, as, uh, as, as individuals, so we should ask ourselves. And it is for this reason, therefore, that I feel that the, the writer of uh, Psalms 90, who is Moses, had something very, very special uh, that he wanted uh, us to, to, to really learn from that particular experience. And it is only him who can do what can give us wisdom. Now, um, another book, this is uh, First uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 30 has 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 uh, has a message for us. Uh, Corinthians one. Thirty says that. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who both both in the Lord. I'm sure that's a question that we are going to ask ourselves, because if you go back to um, a psalm, we would ask, like, where does this wisdom come? We learn that the God sent his son to us, and through his son, we get wisdom, and who is by extension eternal life. So the question that we take away from this uh, particular verse that uh, we've just read is it confirms to us that by having God or accepting God in our life, we'll have eternal life. Whereas the challenges that I alluded to previously may affect, affect us, be it death, be it uh, sickness. You are certain that there is a hope that you are looking forward to, a hope that Christ is going to come back and take us home. He's coming back for a second time and going to take us home. But in the meantime, even as we wait for Christ, the question is, what are we going to do? Do we only sit back and wait for Christ to come back? No, there's a lot of things that we could do and, and prepare um, even as he comes because when he is coming, he'll not just come for anybody. He'll come for those who are ready and prepared to go home with him. But oftentimes as human beings, we are very, very um, comfortable in our own small cocoons. We rarely ask what someone does. We do not even want to say hi to someone. It is human nature. I have my problem, let me sort them out. We'll meet when we meet, or we'll talk when there's a need for us to talk. But it's because of the love of God that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Because of that reason, he's going to come back and take us home for a second time. Now, the question that I want to bring to us this morning, and the thing that I want us to, to, to ask ourselves, is that where is our position with Christ or where is our position with God? If you want to come today, I know as an individual that my life is very, very short. As I said, coupled with trouble, like um, so many of us, but there are times when I also have a very good life and I thank God for him because it's not always gloom. 
the time when things work out very, very well and can't even ask yourself, like, how did this come to pass? But he loves and do well. He, his life, his love uh, bears all things. Are we the kind of people who, uh, whenever we are wronged, um, react immediately? Or do we also take time and think about whatever may have driven our brother or sister to do that? Or are we self conceited in our own cocoon? This may appear like hard eating questions, or why is so and so talking about this? Because even myself, when I listen, or even when I was looking at this particular uh, uh, book, I show my own shortcomings as an individual. And my prayer is that the Lord strengthens me and helps me in this journey, even as I prepare for his second coming, so that if he comes back, then I should be among the people who will be ready to go home with him. But that is not going to be an easy, it's not going to be an easy rest. Because we as human beings have our own wisdom. We do not want to be challenged. We want to do things our own way. And that has uh, made our life not so very, very easy. Some people may even say that the problems that we are experiencing as human beings today may be as a result of the Lord getting um, angered and he's sending a message to us. It may be true, it may not be true, but at times we may be inclined to listen to such kind of thoughts, or such kind of, of ideas. Now, even as we wait and prepare for Christ to come, there's only one particular uh, book that will tell you and myself of what we are supposed to be doing. And this is in Romans, and I'm going to ask you to turn to that book and let us read and see what it has and Nikki will read for us some particular verse later. This is Romans 9. Mm -hmm. Are you all there? So it says like, I speak the truth in Christ, I am not lying, uh, my conscience confirms that I through uh, the Holy Spirit, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I wish that I myself were cut and cut off from Christ for the sake of the people, those of my own race, the people of Israel, there's um, is the adoption of sonship, there's uh, the divine glory, the covenant, the re receiving of the law, the temple of worship, and the promises. There are the patriarchs, and from men, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God, over all and uh, forever prayed. So that is another prayer. But then it tells us that there are a number of um, things that um, we should be able to, to, to do what? We should be able to focus on. I should be able to focus on. Um, I think I've kind of changed the verses, whatever it is that I was uh, I wanted to share with us. Uh, I think it was Romans 9, yes. Sorry. To verse, it was chapter, it was chapter 12, sorry, it was not uh, chapter 9, it was chapter 12. 
of, uh, of Roman. So it says like men as live as uh, as as as, as sacrifices. So it says that like this is from verse three of uh, of chapter twelve. This is Roman. That for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with a sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For uh, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we through many form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according uh, to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it's accordance, uh, if it is um, prophecy um, uh, in accordance with you, with your faith, if it is um, service, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouragement, then encourage. Uh, if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently because it shows mercy uh, and uh, do it cheer, do it cheerfully. So this takes me back to the reason why I was asking us what it is that what it is that we are doing. But above all of these things, the most important thing that we should be able to learn and what will drive us to do all of this is love. And that has been captured in verse nine, even as we go ahead. And I'll read it. And it says like love must be sincere. Have what hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another, uh, honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless um, those, uh, do, bless and do not cast. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Love, um, live uh, with harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position and do not be conceited. Do not repay evil with evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. So, these Verses are more or less confirming the few words that I alluded to previously in regard to how easy we should have uh, or we should have amicable lives with others or what we need to do as individuals because it confirmed to us that we cannot do this for someone who we do not in. We can only do this for our brother and sister who resides within our, uh, of our, uh, our, in our neighborhoods, people we interact with on a daily basis. So then it says, continues in verse, um, uh, verse 18. It says like, verse 17 says like, do not, be, do not repay anyone with evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, um, as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not, be, do not take revenge, my dear friend. But leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him um, something to, to drink. Um, in doing this, you will hit burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil. Do not but overcome evil with good. So I think it's in verse uh, 19, if Mickey was kind enough to read it in his uh, version, it tells us, let us not have our own wisdom. In New, New International Version, it talks of conceit. conceit con being conceited is like having um, an opinion that you cannot be questioned because you're what? You're, you're right, and um, you are not keen to listen to any other person uh, uh, give you his, his own opinion. So verse 12 of, 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 of 90, that is the Psalms where we all began, tells us something which is very, very important. And that is like, teach us the, to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
Looking at what this text that we've looked at, we learn one thing, that our days are numbered. Wisdom is not manly. It comes from above, it comes from God. And we've seen from the text that we read, that is Corinthians 1, verse 30, that because of Christ who has died on the cross of each and every one of us, we now have wisdom. My prayer is that each and every one of us seeks that wisdom, seeks that wisdom so that we are able to live a life like people who have seen. You see, the Bible tells us well, what we learn is that we cannot foretell the future. It's only God who can tell the, the end from the beginning. But if we are uh, closer to God, then he'll give us the wisdom to act, to act as if we are individuals who are seeing the future. So even as we come to an end, the most important thing, though the few lessons that I don't want us to walk away with, if you forget anything, is that let us not forget to come and to God and trust in Him. Because if we accept Him, then He will be able to help us and give us wisdom to be able to live a uh, life worthy of his, of, of, his, of his glory. Let us love, let us um, endure, and let us also um, seek the goodness in others, but not only ourselves. Let the Lord bless us and give us the, the strength and the, the patience to listen or to uh, walk in this, in this difficult world that we are living in today. May the Lord bless.